Hello world, I'm Mandy Mundo and welcome to my YouTube channel. For this video, I will be going over the costs of my two month, yes, two month trip to Australia and New Zealand. I spent the month in each, Australia first and then New Zealand. You'll see that some of my prices are either in US dollars, New Zealand dollars, or Australia dollars. It just depends on what I used, whether it was my credit card, paying online, or paying in cash. And this was a solo trip. This was my first ever solo trip. So just myself, no Jeremy, and two months. So it was really, really long. So let's get started. So first we have my logistics stuff. So that's airfare, visas, and my SIM card. And flying to Australia and back from New Zealand, it was expensive. So that's why I kept this separate depending on where you're traveling from. So in all of my flights, I spent over $2,000, but that includes my inter-island flights as well. And then the visas and the SIM cards in Australia and New Zealand were very cheap. So because I was four weeks in each location, I wanted to make sure I had cell phone service so I could basically use my phone for, for GPS or for looking up stuff. So it was only 42 Australian dollars in Australia and 43 New Zealand dollars in New Zealand. And then the visas were very cheap as well. So it just depends again on where you are traveling from. So I started off my trip in Cairns, which is in Queensland, Australia. It's in the north and it's the tropical region. So it was very, very warm. I spent the first three nights in the Daintree Rainforest. So I rented a car, which was very cheap. The Daintree Rainforest is about two hours away. So for my three day rental car it was only $83. And then you have to ride a ferry to get into the rainforest, a car ferry. And I stayed at this lodge, this rainforest lodge. It had swimming holes in the river, it had pool, it had a restaurant, and it was these little cabins in the rainforest. So that was really cool. I did a couple activities while I was there. The Discovery Center is there. Um, it's kind of like these walkways through the canopies and it has different displays of the flora and fauna of the rainforest. So that was pretty neat. And then the more expensive activity I did was the river float. So that's where we were on these rafts and we floated down the, the river and it had just rained really hard the day before. So it was uh, very, very fast water, but that was really fun. So that was only 130 Australian dollars. After the Daintree Rainforest, I dropped off my rental car back at the Cairns airport where I picked it up and then I I uh, went on a ferry to get to Fitzroy Island. So Fitzroy Island is like a resort island. So it just has the resort, a couple restaurants, a couple hiking trails, and that's it. So I originally booked it for five nights, but I changed it to two, which is a really good idea because it's so small, you definitely don't need to spend five nights there. So about 300 Australian dollars for two nights. And then I was debating whether to bring my own snorkel gear or rent but the activities I was doing, it either included snorkel or it only cost me $34 to rent, 34 Australian dollars to rent, um, which is pretty cheap for the whole weekend I was there. And that way I didn't have to pack a snorkel for the rest of my two month trip. Now on the way back into Cairns, I stayed one just one night at a hostel in the city because I was catching a bus that wasn't until the next morning. So I did my laundry while I was there and this was my first hostel stay. I had my own private room, which is why it was more expensive if you're used to hostel stays, but that's what I wanted. I didn't want to stay in a bunk bed, but it was great for what it was, just like a night's sleep, you know, make myself some breakfast in the morning and then catch my bus. Um, so the next part of my trip was the Whit Sundays. So I took the bus from Cairns to Airlie Beach in the Whit Sundays. It was about an eight hour bus ride, $70 there. And I stayed in a hostel, again, in a private room. And I don't mind doing that. So the great thing about this solo trip and Jeremy not being with me is he would never stay in a hostel or, or these like budget places. But I knew I wanted to do that to save money. And also I don't need fancy, smanchy, bougie stuff, especially if I'm out all day doing activities. So it was only $96 for two nights at the hostel. 
I did a couple more excursions here. I did a snorkel tour, which was all day around the Whit Sundays, and it included lunch, and it also included some hiking time. So we hiked up to um, these scenic points and got a great view of the Whit Sunday Islands. So that was really neat. And then I did this really expensive overnight stay on the Great Barrier Reef. So that was called Reef Sleep. And it was 900 Australian dollars because I had to pay the single rate. If you're two doubles, um, then it would be 600 Australian dollars a piece, I think. So I thought it was a fantastic experience. Unfortunately, the snorkeling wasn't as good as the zigzag tour I did the day before, which is weird because you're way out there on the Great Barrier Reef. I thought the snorkeling would have been a lot better, but there's a lot of people out there snorkeling with you. So I think that had something to do with it. But just the fact that I got to stay overnight on the Great Barrier Reef, that was amazing. <laughs> like you can't ask for a better experience. They fed us, uh, got to sleep in that little canopy tent on the deck of the, of the ship. It was so cool. So I would highly recommend that for people. So after the race to sleep, I went to Hamilton Island, which is one of the Whitsunday Islands, the only one you can really stay on. And I stayed one night there because I was flying out from the island the next day. Now I can tell you this was not worth it. It was $400 to stay the night there because I booked so late there was only a suite available. But the island itself, it's a lot of resorts, restaurant resorts, um, and then some boats in the marina and like these beaches that weren't that exciting. It was just not my cup of tea. So I wouldn't choose to stay there again. And it is what it is, but I, I just did not enjoy myself there. Luckily I was only there for the one night. So after the Whit Sundays, I flew to Newcastle. Now I had never heard about Newcastle before going there, but it is a couple hours away from Sydney and it's in New South Wales, Australia. I had recently had a membership, bought a membership with Trusted House Sitters, which is a dog sitting website. I didn't know what this was either, but I found that people were doing it to help save money on lodging while they were traveling. So a year long membership is $200, but you get to stay at people's houses for free. And in exchange, you just have to watch their animals for free. So really after one night of staying at someone else's place, it practically pays for itself because that's about how much you'd be spending on a hotel room, right? So I stayed in Newcastle for two weeks because that's how long the owners who own the dogs were away for. So this was my first experience doing this internationally. I've done trusted house sitters a few different times, but I think it's the bee's knees. I think it's amazing. I think it's such a good deal and I love animals. So I get to hang out with people's animals while they're away and get somewhere to stay for free. So because I had a kitchen, I got to spend uh, very little money on groceries and things for the two weeks. I went to the movies a couple different times just for something to do. And then I didn't rent a car the whole time because two week rental car would have been way too expensive. And I really didn't need a car, but I did want to do uh, one activity going to the Hunter Valley wine region, which was far away. So I did need a rental car. So I rented it for just a few days, which was still pretty pricey, a couple hundred dollars. And I did a wine tasting tour that was all day. And then I did a tour of their garden, fields, acreage, things. So I really enjoyed my stay in Newcastle and the couple that owned the dogs were so friendly. So it was two bigger dogs and I just had to learn their routine and got to hang out with them, snuggle with them. So it was really cool. Again, I think it's such a great thing to be able to do, especially for travelers. So you're helping out other travelers by watching their dogs and they're helping you out by giving you a place to stay. So a really cool experience. Next, I went to Sydney. So I just caught the train from Newcastle to Sydney and I stayed in a capsule hotel, which was my first time ever doing this. Again, something Jeremy would never do, <laughs> but I stayed in this little bunk bed capsule and it ended up being $200, 200 Australia dollars for three nights or about 150 US dollars for, for three nights. So such a good deal for being in Sydney. I think I was in Koreatown maybe um, in that area. 
So I spent a couple hundred dollars on food and then I rode the bus a couple times and had to take the Uber to the airport because it was so early in the morning to leave. I did a free walking tour while I was there. I've done this in a few other cities. So it is completely free, but if you want to give them a gratuity at the end of the tour based on your experience, then you can definitely do that. And then I did the bridge climb. So the, I think it's the world's longest single suspension bridge or something, don't quote me, but you can climb up to the top of it with other people. You can't take your own camera, unfortunately, but you get really cool views of the Sydney Harbor. So it was expensive, but totally worth it because where else can you do something like that? And then I bought a couple souvenirs, my Australia magnet and then a flag. So in total for Australia, I spent about $3,900, which is a lot, but when you think about it, it was a little over $1,000 a week. So, and that's not including the airfare, so yes, a little bit more than that. So I definitely could have done better, but I did save a lot of money doing the dog sitting for sure. So moving on to New Zealand, I flew from Sydney into Queenstown. So I started my journey on the South Island first and I literally landed, took a bus from the airport into Queenstown, got on the bungee bunch right away and went bungee jumping. So airport, land, boom, into a bungee jump. Uh, the bungee jump, it's the AJ Hackett bungee and it's the original location that they do in New Zealand, the bridge over the water, over the river. So I just had to do it. It was 285 New Zealand dollars because I paid extra to get the video and the pictures. So I thought that was worth it. I did get to hold on to my own GoPro while bungee jumping. So I just still wanted the other shots as well. After the bungee jump, I still had my backpack on and I didn't have a car, so I had to walk an hour to the place I was staying. I stayed at a vineyard hotel and no big deal, right? It was just an hour walk, it was fine. But I stayed at this really fancy vineyard hotel, so that cost a lot of money just for two nights, but it was really pretty. The view right outside the room was the vineyard. Uh, just amazing. It looked like a lot like uh, the California wine region in Northern California, if you've ever been there. So I spent 150 New Zealand dollars on food. I did a wine tasting while I was there. And then I, the next day, went to, um, I think it was called Cromwell. But again, I didn't have a car, so I had to get there by foot and it was about 18 to 20 miles. I made it 12 <laughs> walking with my backpack before I fell and scraped my knee and busted my lip. So wasn't doing too well. And then some good Samaritan pulled over and asked me if I wanted a lift. And I said, heck yes, please take me the remaining six miles to my final destination. So I was catching a bus the next morning. So I had to do the same thing like I did in Australia. I had to just stay one night because the bus wasn't until the morning. So $80 for an Airbnb for one night. Uh, the place I was hiking, it was the New Zealand Highway 6, I think it was called. So not hiker friendly or walker friendly, very small shoulders, but I did it and I would have kept going had I not fallen, but it was just a good uh, backpacking, rucking experience to be able to do that for the, the 12 miles or so that I did. So once I caught the bus, it was about four hours to my next location. So this is when I did a farm stay. So similar to the Trusted House Sitters, you can pay a yearly membership to do farm stays in a certain country. So it's called Woofing or WWOOF, Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. And you can stay at a farm for free and in exchange, they get a few hours work out of you each day. So for a New Zealand membership for the entire year, it's $14. Pretty good deal. So I stayed on a farm on the South Island for five nights and the they provide your meals and I got a room to myself and in exchange, I did some farm work. So mostly in the garden, I did some seeding, some weeding, some harvesting of potatoes, some mulching, and then got to hang out with the sheep because it was a, a sheep farm and a, and a garden. And it was also an airstrip 
too. So um, it, it had like a little uh, airstrip, which in New Zealand is just a mowed lawn. And you can see the airplanes coming in and out, the little local pilots. Uh, while I was there, I bought a book at a used bookstore bought a magnet and a bookmark um, and then after the five nights farm stay I went and stayed with friends for the remaining eight nights so again saving on lodging here I stayed with two different friends and of course they wouldn't let me pay for any of my food while I was there so I spent very little in these two weeks these two middle weeks in New Zealand but it was great went into Christchurch got to see uh, the mountains in Nithin, so I, I had a blast and got to catch up with, with some old friends. After the Christchurch area, I went to the Marlboro Sound. So I was with my friend and I was trying to decide what the next leg of my journey was going to be. Uh, Australia I had pretty much planned out, but New Zealand I left a little bit fluid, a little open, because I wanted to just see where the wind was gonna take me. So I was flipping through a picture book and I saw that the Marlboro Sounds was this really pretty picture. So I said, huh, I wanna go there. And it's right at the top of the South Island. So I took the Coastal Pacific train from Christchurch to Picton, and that's where you can hang out on the train and do um, just like some sightseeing. So it's, it's mainly for tourists. Um, and then I spent three nights in the Marlboro Sounds at the Hopewell Lodge. And you can't get there by car, you have to take a boat to get there so the owners can arrange transport to come and pick you up. And then while you're there, you can bring your own groceries and do your own cooking because they don't have services once you get there. So that was an experience. It was so awesome, so peaceful too. For an extra $20, you can rent their kayaks and their bikes and their fishing boat. You can fish for your own fish. You can go grab your own mussels. And just so calm and so amazing and so pretty. So I'm really glad that I did that. And Jeremy would have definitely loved it. I also did some hiking while I was there too. So for the whole lodge stay, that's the stay. Um, I did laundry and then renting the uh, extra the or the bike equipment and stuff. About five hundred eighty-five New Zealand dollars. After the Marlboro Sounds, I headed to the North Island. So you can take a ferry from the South Island to the North Island. It takes about three hours, and you have to book it in advance if you want a daytime ferry. So I booked it. I don't know maybe like a couple weeks out and the only ferry time available for the day I chose was the 7 p.m. ferry so I did get to see the sunset but then it was dark the the rest of the way actually I think it was like four hour four and a half hours long it was pretty long um, but a pretty cheap ferry ride 68 New Zealand dollars I stayed in Wellington for two nights and I went to the museum while I was there the famous museum it's actually free but again, you can give a donation if you desire. And I had broken my fanny pack at the water bottle holder at some point in New Zealand. So I just went to a little like tailor shop and they repaired it for me really quickly. And then I took the bus to the airport because I was gonna fly to the top of the, the North Island for the next part. So my next location was another farm stay. So, I flew into uh, Gisborne and my farm stay didn't, didn't start till the next day so I stayed one night in Gisborne and the uh, flight plus the Airbnb the one night stay about a couple hundred dollars but I stayed on the farm again for free so the couple who owned the farm it was just vegetables these cows were were next door at a different farm um, but they were vegetarians so they fed me all my meals and basically while I was there I only did weed eating because there wasn't any harvesting going on for those the three days that I was there so I just did weed eating for three days which is fine by me um, and then free lodging and free meals for those three nights so I spent very little on my own food just at the airport or at the bus stop And then to finish out my New Zealand trip, I spent the remaining four nights in the Auckland area. So I took a bus from Apodiki to Auckland, 
and then I got on the ferry right away to Waikiki Island. So there's an island off the coast of Auckland. Didn't know this, but I had met some people early on in my trip who are from Auckland and I asked them what I should do when I go there and they said, you have to go to Waikiki Island. I said, okay. So I went to Waikiki Island for two nights and I stayed in this little Airbnb camper van. <laughs> so there were three different camper vans on the property. Uh, so that was really cool. I only paid like $7 for bus tickets around the island. Otherwise I walked the rest of the way. I did a couple wine tastings while I was there. And then I just relaxed, hung out at the beach and then went back to the Auckland city center. So when I was in Auckland, I did another free walking tour and then I wanted to go to the glowworm caves. The glowworm caves were a couple hours away and to get there by public transportation, it was just really crazy. It would have taken forever. So I shilled out the money and I rented a, just a one day car rental, you know, um, just to be able to go. Uh, you can't take any photos or videos or GoPros on the glowworm tour, so I don't have any footage of that, but it was really neat. So you're on a tube and you're floating underground on this little river and it's really dark, so you just look up and there are the glowworms. So that was cool. I'm glad I did it, but I wish I would have some photographic evidence to help me remember it. Um, so I spent a couple hundred dollars on food during these four days. And then I did a couple different Ubers, I think to like go pick up the rental car and go drop it off. And then probably to get to the airport too. And then I bought a book while I was at the airport for my 13 hour flight back to Texas. So my New Zealand total was cheaper than Australia. It was about $3,100, and but that doesn't include the, the SIM card or the visa or the flights. So the grand total was $3,900 for Australia, $3,100 for New Zealand, so about $7,000. If you add my flights and everything else into it, it's about $9,500. So again, really expensive. I could have done better, but I did save a lot. I basically had two weeks of free lodging in each country. So I did save a lot of money. Uh, and if I was with two people, it would have been more expensive for food and stuff like that and excursions. So I'm really glad that I did it. It was my first solo trip and I would definitely do another solo trip again. But once I got to the six week mark, I was getting kind of tired and homesick. So I think if I plan another one in the future, I'll cap it at six weeks instead of this, this eight weeks that I did. So that was my cost for Australia and New Zealand. And if you haven't already, you can look at my Australia and New Zealand videos. I did a lot of fun stuff while I was there and it was awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time.